Good morning. I, Grantly, have the joy of sharing with you this morning. In 1980, whilst at university, as I walked through a church door, God spoke to me. That day, my parents' God became my God. Suddenly, the boring Bible became alive. For the next year, I really devoured the Word of God and grew incredibly. At this point, I felt it was right to tithe to God of my most precious resources as an engineering student. Money and time. Working out what 10% of 24 hours worked out to, 2 hours and 24 minutes. Getting up at 4 a.m., dressing warmly as it was winter, sitting just outside my bedroom window so I would not fall asleep, but have a light with which to read. I would pray and read my Bible. The first week was incredible. I really enjoyed the, this new adventure. The second week was tough. The third week I received nothing, felt nothing. Determined to make this work, I pushed through three months of freezing with very little to show for my time. Disillusioned, I did not open my Bible for nine months other than in church. I felt a failure, a hypocrite pretending all was well, yet knowing deep inside I was floundering. I felt like I was backsliding. Eventually, after nine months, I sort of settled into a new routine of spending about 30 minutes a day reading my Bible and in prayer, feeling a bit of a failure and a bit backslidden, having lost my radical edge. It was about six months later that a friend of a friend asked me that when he had met me a year earlier at a wedding, whether I could remember shaking his hand. Not sure, I asked him why. He then shared that he could not let go of my hand for a very long time. As he looked at me, he saw Jesus and was totally mesmerized. This is the only time anyone has ever seen Jesus in me in this way. This is also the time when I felt at my worst in my backsliding. So what happened in that terrible nine months of emptiness? Although I did not realize it at the time, I learned some incredible lessons. 1. Just like I needed God to save me at the day when He became my God, I needed Him daily to save me from just slipping away. 2. God was at work in me, even though I could not see it, feel it, or experience anything. 3. And finally, humility. I cannot, in my own strength, regardless of my noble ideas, please God or grow spiritually. Just imagine if I had succeeded in keeping my time tithe. How I would be telling everyone to do the same and thinking I was better than them if they could not. I praise God for this failure. I came to realize I was not backsliding, but frontsliding in this desert time. At the Last Supper, Jesus says in Luke 22, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Here we see Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. The question is, was Jesus' prayer a failure and did Peter's faith fail? Or maybe, like in my case, Peter needed to learn the humility that in himself he can do nothing. That in himself, he is a mere wretch, desperately needing a God to look after him. Could it be that Peter was not backsliding, but frontsliding, and that Jesus' prayer had absolutely been fulfilled when he proclaimed, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. 
Peter felt like a complete failure, and for the next few days before that special meeting on the beach, where Jesus reaffirms Peter, he must have really struggled in deep anguish, not knowing which way to turn. But it is in this anguish we learn the incredible lesson of humility, which is an essential ingredient in our growth to become more like Christ. Last time I shared about Moses, who at age 40 tried to be Israel's saviour, completely bungled up, and that God put him into the desert for 40 years. The Bible in the book of Numbers then says that Moses was the most humble man on earth. God needed a humble man, a man who knew in himself he could not lead these two million people, a man who was totally reliant on God and God alone to successfully lead his people through the very harsh desert. Although Moses must have felt totally backslidden when looking after the stupid sheep, and you can read his lament in Psalm 90, he was, in fact, front sliding. Where are you today? Have you had dreams for how God could use you in his kingdom? And now those dreams feel more like a bad memory that you have hidden deep down, hoping they will not haunt you anymore? Could you be in the desert where God is shaping, molding and preparing you into breaking new territory in his name? Could you be radiating Jesus brightly? even though you feel like a failure, like I did when that friend of a friend shook my hand. God is at work. Put your trust in him. You cannot do it, but he can. And if we yield to him, he will. Let us pray. Father, you know my heart. You know my dreams that now seem like a distant, unwelcome memory. Please waken up these dreams. Help me to believe that you and you alone can bring them to fulfillment. God, I want to see your kingdom come, but do not know how or where or what. But thank you that I can put my trust in you. Amen. Have a blessed day.